My name is Father Albert Constantine. I am the Associate Rector of Our Lady of Mount Lebanon, St. Peter Cathedral in Los Angeles, California. And I pray all of you are well and are staying safe. Today I would like to speak with you about the anointing of Jesus at Bethany. Matthew 26, verses 6 through 8. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now while Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, and she put it on his head as he sat at the table. But when the disciples saw it, they were angry and said, Why this waste? My brothers and sisters, to the disciples it seems, this is simply too much money to waste. Who does that, they wonder? Why would anyone do that? It is neither practical nor reasonable. To them, what this woman does makes no sense. Why does all of it have to be poured out? Something that valuable should at least be saved for a special occasion. Surely it could be put to better use elsewhere. And what difference could this ointment possibly make anyway, they wonder. Why was it not sold and the money given to the poor? The disciples, it seems, have a limit. And this woman has just exceeded their limit. I wonder what would have been acceptable to them. What would have been reasonable? I don't know what their number is, and we will never know. But that is not the point of today's gospel. The more relevant question is about us, about you and me. What is my number? What is your number? What is our limit? At what point do we, you and I, say it simply costs too much to love? That is what the story is all about. It is not about money. It is not about ointment. But it is about love. This story forces us to ask ourselves, upon whose head are we unwilling to pour out the fragrance of our life and our love? Is it those who look, act, or think differently than us? Is it those who have hurt us? Is it our enemies? Is it those who have made poor choices, choices we know are wrong and we would never support? If we are really honest about it, we all have our limits, we all have our reasons, and we all have our fears that keep us from loving and that tell us it is simply not practical or reasonable. We tell ourselves, not this person, not right now, not here. But then comes Holy Week. And Holy Week takes us to the boundaries of what is practical, what is reasonable, what makes sense. And then it asks us to step across. That is the way of love. That is the way of Christ. Yes, the ointment this woman uses will soon fade. But life, the life given to each of us so generously by God, is eternal. And love, love, my brothers and sisters, is immortal. That is what this story is telling us. I know that we find ourselves these days in difficult, unusual, and indeed scary times. Our lives are somehow different. They are changed now. But these changes should allow for, and indeed they should even demand from us, a different type of presence. So I pray that we will let the current inconvenience and disruption focus our attention on who and what truly matters. I pray that this situation we find ourselves in will make us more intentional about what we choose to do or not do. That sounds a lot like Holy Lent, the kind of Lent by which lives are changed and resurrection is experienced. We ask God to give peace, courage, and hope to all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. We ask him to bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the sick and the suffering. We ask him to keep them safe and healthy, and to grant them wisdom and skill, sympathy, and patience. 
We ask him to open our hearts and hands to assist and care for those who will lose their jobs or be affected financially by this terrible pandemic. We ask him to give us compassion for those in need and patience in this time of distress and love for our neighbors. To let our hearts not be afraid and in the multitude of his mercies to look with compassion upon us and on all those who turn to him for help. For he is a gracious and generous God and to whom we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now, always, and forever. Amen. May God bless you. May he protect you. And may you have a truly blessed Holy Week and a truly blessed Easter. God bless.